Just as wars test an army's preparedness, so major fires test the capabilities of fire protection agencies. Several major fires followed the big blow up of 1910, but the one which had the most impact at the time on the evolution of fire technology occurred in Western Oregon. The Tillamook burn of August 1933 began under classical fire conditions, but according to popular tradition was ignited in a unique way. Loggers had been asked to shut down their operations, but one small operator hurried to drag in a few more logs with a steam donkey before complying. Somehow, the last log created enough friction as it skidded through the logging debris to cause ignition. The logging crew struggled to put out the fire, but it was soon out of control. A lookout 10 miles to the south spotted the smoke and sounded the alarm. This time, organized fire crews were ready nearby and arrived quickly by motor truck. 1,000 enrollees from nearby CCC camps joined other fighters for their first major fire campaign. However, motor roads into the woods were scarce, and access to the fire often entailed a long trek on foot or by mule train. Telephone lines were strung out for communication, but the vulnerable wires were burned out time and again, and the Forest Service's new portable radio was brought in to fill the gap. The 3,000 workers had confined the blaze to 40,000 acres when once again nature played its cruel trick. The dreaded east wind rose and humidity dropped to 16%. Suddenly, the fire blew up, literally, exploding with nuclear porosity. Firefighters lost control as the awesome wall of fire advanced westward along a 15-mile front. In the next 20 hours, the firestorm raged across an additional 240,000 acres of prime virgin timber as shown in this rare footage of the burn. After two weeks of terror, the welcome rains finally arrived and the fire gradually died down. As in previous fires, the basic suppression technique had been to deny the fire its fuel by scraping away wood and brush in a swath around the blaze. Firefighters cleared lines by hand using shovels, axes, and other tools common to farms and logging camps. But some new tools specifically developed for the fire line were appearing. Possibly the most celebrated was a Pulaski, a combination axe and hoe, which was invented by Ed Pulaski, the hero of the great 1910 fire. As a direct result of the Tillamook burn, agencies adopted stringent fire prevention measures such as regulations prohibiting logging when fire danger reached the critical point. Loggers responded by initiating the hoot owl shift, starting at first light in order to get in a day's work before having to shut down during the heat of the afternoon. The Tillamook burn also contributed to the adoption by the U.S. Forest Service of the 10 a.m. policy. Every effort was made to extinguish all fires before 10 a.m. the day following detection, before temperatures rose and humidity dropped. If this first effort failed, firefighters were depressed for suppression by 10 a.m. of each succeeding day. From an almost complete lack of forest fire protection prior to 1910, the service had, within 25 years, swung over to a determination to suppress all wildfires swiftly.